Good evening, everyone. This is Jeremy Webb, Neptune Theatre's Artistic Director, welcoming you to a lovely Good Friday edition of Off the Leash. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen it before, Off the Leash is Neptune Theatre's opportunity to communicate with everyone out there who uh, are like us, isolating at home and letting the people that should be fighting this thing fight this thing without us in the way. Um, it's a great chance for us to connect with some friends and colleagues and uh, listen to them talk about how they're doing, what they're up to, uh, what's changed, what's changing, and what their hopes are for the future. So uh, welcome. This is our last uh, last edition of the week. We're about to announce our guest lineup for next week. I'm very excited by next week's lineup as well. Uh, that'll be week three. Uh, this started off as a bit of fun, and now we're just going to keep going. Anyway, we'll keep going until we till everyone gets bored. Um, so uh, hopefully that won't be right now while I'm talking. So let me bring in our guests. And, and as you can tell, totally not scripted, not planned whatsoever. So I'm so professional. Um, let's bring in our guests. We're very happy tonight with our lineup of friends. I'm going to bring them all in and then introduce them all. Here they come, all three of them. We have Lara Lewis, Sarah Richardson, and Richie Wilcox in the house. Welcome, you three. Hi. Hi. Hey. It's good to see you. It's, uh, it's good to see anyone at the moment, except the same three <laughs> people that I'm living in the house with, but it's really good to see you three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. It's like the gay edition. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Um, yeah, I just first I, I have to applaud your jacket. Mine. Oh, thank you. Yes. yes. Can we just see, can we can we get the full the full meal deal? A little, uh, yeah. flamingo. flamingo. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's a uh, as I said to Sarah. Any excuse to dress up right now? Uh, I'm not yeah. going to show you what I'm. I mean, it's jogging pants on the bottom, but whatever. <laughs> this yeah. I'm really good about. I've I found myself getting dressed just before this broadcast for the last. Uh, two weeks, so it's been a reason, uh, you know. And then the and then the kids kind of recognize me. Um, <laughs> Those of the time that is walking around saying, "Who's this dude mumbling around the house all the time? He's never normal." Yeah, and why uh, is he here all the time? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, are you all are you all safe? Are you secure? Are you surviving, Lara? How you doing? I'm pretty okay. Um, I live alone, which is like good and bad, but I also have a cat, which is like pretty great right now um, mm -hmm. because I have nothing to do but just pour my love into an animal um, and I don't have roommates to be afraid of infecting me. So I'm doing pretty great. That's that's actually kind of a benefit of living alone. Every time my five-year-old sneezes or <laughs> snots up somewhere, I... <laughs> I put him outside. Uh, Sarah, <laughs> Sarah, how are you doing? Uh, I am doing well, yeah. Uh, I too live alone, so that sort of uh, helps with the not infecting people coming into my home or people coming into my home not infecting me kind of thing. Not that I have it, sorry, but uh, you know, yeah, living alone helps. I have two cats, so two pour my love into, and they're very confused as to why I'm always here too. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> other than that, I spent the night last night with Richie though, because- uh, Yeah. Fun time. We had a Zoom thing last night. It was super fun. Yeah. Now, uh, Richie, just tell us a little about well, how are you doing, and and are you isolating well? And yeah, I mean, I'm uh, I'm with my husband Aaron uh, okay. as well as my cat Charlie, and so I have those uh, those loves to keep me company. And uh, we're in Parsboro, Nova Scotia. So uh, oh. I believe all three of you are in Halifax, and and, and so yeah, it's a it's nice and quiet, uh, and I'm feeling comfortable just kind of living rurally right now, which is, yeah, pretty beautiful. That's great. That's great. I'm, I'm also wearing your ombre mustache, sir. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we just got yes. a good glimpse of that one. <laughs> it's dusting. dusting. It's lovely. Yeah. The dusting. Thank you, Lara. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than a light dusting, though. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, um, we celebrated my, I was celebrating my 40th birthday yesterday. Yeah, uh, tell us a little about last night's hype experience. Yeah, we did a, we did a takeover online. We have these parties that happen. There you go, Jeremy, exactly. Uh, that's from the takeover that happened at Mother's Pizza uh, right. a couple of years ago. Um, but we decided it was our fourth uh, birthday for Heist. Uh, my company, and so we decided to do one online in this time because it's really great to have uh, 
to bring a community together, just like you're doing with this talk show. Uh, and, you know, there was probably at some point, I think there was over 70 people just tuning in and, uh, and awesome. dancing and lip syncing. And uh, yeah, it was a great, a great night of uh, celebration in, you know, this weird, weird time where I thought maybe a 40th birthday would suck. Uh, yeah. It was actually a lot of fun. Awesome. And happy birthday. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 40. You're not 40. That makes me, oh. Uh, <laughs> let's not talk about that anymore. Uh, just uh, briefly tell me a little bit about Heist. For those folks that are watching that uh, uh, are new to you and new to Heist, tell, tell us about Heist. Yeah, Heist is a live art uh, company that's based in Halifax, and uh, we do queer, queerly playful performances we say live art because we do a lot of different things. Sometimes it's parties, sometimes it's um, music shows, uh, and sometimes it's kind of uh, straight up plays, but also we do a lot of drag work. Uh, and so we're really well known for our show, The Princess Show, that has toured around, as well as uh, Princess Rules that uh, Lara Lewis uh, was in. And that picture there is uh, of my husband, Aaron, uh, who's the tech director, and Sylvia Bell, who's the managing director of Heist. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Uh, so what is next for Heist? Uh, uh, are we on pandemic hold right now or what's what's coming up? I mean, we're kind of on pandemic hold, but kind of not. We, uh, like I said, the takeover was actually a huge endeavor and I think we'll probably do another one since um, there's probably time to do another one in this uh, pandemic. Yeah. Uh, and then um, we have a show called Frequencies that's, that's supposed to be uh, premiering in June, uh, that pro- that won't be have that'll be postponed. But at the same point, we're still going forward with a workshop of it, with um, a virtual workshop with Anne Marie Kerr, who's the director. And the show is written by Aaron Collier and Stuart Legier and Francesca Ekuyazi. Uh, and so, yeah, we're uh, we're pretty excited about that endeavor. But uh, we're just gonna hype it up until we actually get to do it. Uh-huh. Awesome. Uh, Lara, tell me a little about what's going on in your world, uh, what's been going on and what's coming up and what are you working on and who are you working with? You seem to be everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, <laughs> I have commitment issues. Um, yeah, so right now, um, what is happening right now? I had like a bunch of fun things that were happening that have all gotten pushed to an indefinite question mark kind of time. Um, but something I've been keeping myself busy with uh, during the pandemic and during quarantine and lockdowny times um, has been working on a show, a like recorded theater show with my friend Mark uh, Foster, who's a wonderful playwright that I love to work with. Um, it's called Bread Baby. Uh, it's part of the National Theater School's Art Apart um, program thing. Uh, yeah, so we've been doing like little virtual rehearsals through Zoom, um, and it's been nice to have a bit of a schedule again. Yeah, and you you also, um, you know, you do a lot of work with the Fringe Festival. Uh, what can you tell us, what do we know about the Fringe for the, for the, for this year? As far as the, um, we, right now, everything is going forward as planned. And yeah. Maybe that'll change, but maybe it won't. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks for that update. And I, and I realize that's a really tough question because we get asked it um, all the time uh, at Neptune. Yeah. I know we all do as uh, arts administrators and planners. And right now we're just holding our breath, making our plans, adjusting our plans, adjusting our plans constantly. Uh, Sarah, how are I, you? What's, I'm good. Now you've been you've yeah. been keeping really busy uh, during COVID nineteen. You started a song a day thing. That yeah. Now you're three. It was weeks mostly. I know it's crazy. It was mostly to give myself a little bit of structure and a little bit of routine because I'm I've never luckily never been unemployed, and so having this much downtime was a little bit of a a new adventure for me. Uh, so as a, uh, a thing, I just thought I would take requests or whatever and see if I would sing a song a day. And, um, and then uh, Catherine Hernandez from Be Current Theater was like, can we call it care with the C, like karaoke? And I was like, I'm here for that. And so she's been doing it. So there's a hashtag now. So if people want to like, you know, do some karaoke tunes and just stick the hashtag on it, it'll all end up in the same place and people can see 
you know, what everybody's been doing during I'm the gonna, pandemic. I'm, by the miracle of modern technology, what's the hashtag? Uh, it's, uh, it, there's two. There's a uh, hashtag COVID karaoke with a C instead of a K for karaoke. And then just hashtag karaoke with a C instead of a So yeah. C-A-R-E-O-K-E. -E. Yeah. What's, ama what's amazing to me is that, I mean, I've known Sarah for many, many years now. Oh, and <laughs> it's karaoke, isn't it? I just realized I yeah, spelled that wrong. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I, see, on, I was going to do it on the fly and be cool. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Sarah, you don't like karaoke. We've tried to get you up for karaoke in in real life, and you don't do it usually. So this I, is a huge I, COVID thing. I know. Sorry, I don't do karaoke when I. That's it. Exactly. Um, I don't do karaoke when I'm in performance mode, like at a show, because I'm trying right. to like maintain vocal health, and I can't scream over a bar. But like, <laughs> go to karaoke when I'm not doing anything else. Like 100. percent I love karaoke. Right. I have to karaoke. Don't lie, Regine. <laughs> you, you are so professional. I personally have never been to karaoke in my life. <laughs> and I think Jeremy taught me karaoke. I think I did. I, I've never been. I never spent every single Wednesday night at Barely's on Barrington Street for four years in a row. I never went I've to Cheers on a Monday night. Yeah, the, the Barely's host knows us by name for sure and, and knows what song we're going to sing. Well, I, I used I used to joke um, that I would be more I, I would be recognized more in the street for karaoke on a Wednesday in <laughs> Barrelis. People would come up and say, "Hey, Mr. Copa," because I used to sing Copa Cabana. Which actually, didn't you take over that song from me? You stole it at one point. Ian Gilmore did too. Yeah. But yeah. Ian Gilmore, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> amazing. Oh, well. You know. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> so, um, how how are things, uh, Richard? I, you know, I don't want to. Uh, we don't want to talk too much about the fact that we can't plan for the future. But uh, yeah. you are now also uh, you're in Parsborough for a reason. Tell us about uh, why you're there, what mm -hmm. you're doing, and what your thoughts are on the situation as it pertains to why you're there. Yeah, presently I'm the artistic director at Ship's Company Theater, uh, the summer theater in Parsborough, which. You know, it's 36 years old uh, and uh, has a long history of putting on a season of, of plays as well as a music series uh, during the summer. And I think like all summer theaters in Nova Scotia at this moment, as well as Neptune, uh, we're on hold trying to figure out what is going to be possible. And like you said, Jeremy, it's a lot of um, it's a lot of putting multiple scenarios in front of you on a table and going, OK, well, maybe this deadline will work and we'll actually get to put the work up. Right yeah. now I have so many fantastic Nova Scotian artists ready to go and the, these plays lined up. Uh, and, and you kind of just want to be like, oh, like the audience needs to see this. But at the same point, of course, uh, for safety reasons, they can't right now. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's a wait and see game. And also it's a bit of a, um, you know, altering your perception and being like, okay, well, if this can't happen this way, how can we actually showcase these artists in a way yeah. in the future that uh, is good for ships and as well good for those people? I, I've i been feeling a lot of um, stress, like a lot of people. Um, I'm, I'm very blessed and very fortunate. Um, I, but I some of it was to do with, you know, knowing what next season was going to be at Neptune and what we've lined up. And the you know, those shows, are, uh, there's a question mark over everything that we're doing, of course. Um, there's no question of that. But, and I, and I was feeling kind of sorry for myself one day um, because I'm, you know, it's my, only my third season that I've uh, produced. And then I thought of you getting this job, programming this really amazing season with all these artists and having it yanked from you by a pandemic. I nearly swore. Yeah. By a pandemic. Uh, and I, I, I know the uh, ships, and you will rise above it and, and survive, and we'll get to see this stuff. But I, uh, it's tough. Well, I, I, I'm trying to remember the uh, the phrase that um, our board chair Mary McPhee uses, but I think it's on something along the lines of smooth smooth seas never made a strong sailor. It's true. And uh, and so I think that's really appropriate for ships, but also appropriate for everyone. That uh, yeah. you know, as artists, we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be able to figure out creatively a way to to make this work. Uh, but it's definitely stressful, and I definitely had at least one good cry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we need to do. We all need to 
have a damn good cry. Yeah, a little purge. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lara, what is it you think right now, uh, I, I, I'm assuming you've been watching social media and um, watching everyone in the arts community, people like Sarah jumping onto the internet and and giving us little snippets of entertainment. What is it about artists and creators that makes them rise to this challenge? And what do you what do you think about that? I mean, I think it kind of makes sense. Like our whole job is interpreting things in a creative way. So um, it's like it's like when you have a writing prompt and those um, restrictions can lead to like really interesting creative ideas. It's like the exact same thing, except with space instead of ideas. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, what, uh, what have you been doing to, I mean, Lara, you talked about giving all that love to that cat of yours. Um, have you been doing anything, uh, or watching anything, or catching up on anything, anything that you never had time to do to keep sane and look after yourselves, other than playing with your loved ones or singing songs daily online? Yeah, um, so something I've been meaning to do for a really long time, when we, when um, my grandmother uh, got sick enough that we had to move her into a care facility, um, I got her old cookbook. So this entire time I've just been like making recipes from this cookbook and it's great. Um, turns out I can make really great shortbread and all I needed was the time. I have a pie cooling on my stove top right now. Well, I, I was just watching the Great British Bake Off and so we are like on point right now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. um, Great British Bake Off is amazing, but have you seen its like sister show, The Great Pottery Throwdown? No! <laughs> it's <laughs> amazing. So they make, obviously they, they use clay and they create something, are they given a task and then they have to? Yeah, like yeah. every episode it's like, um, make like a tiny set of espresso cups or like make this um, like brunch platter. It's amazing. <laughs> I, 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 I'm thinking we can make a TV show out of anything, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, Pottery I, Throwdown seems a lot more violent than what I, Potter would be. <laughs> in the finale, they're just gonna like have a fist fight. Yeah. yeah. Like, Where's us on their hands? Yeah. <laughs> the theme tune of the show would be um, uh, the song from the mu musical Ghost or the movie Ghost. Oh yes. Um, I'm not going to sing it, but Sarah, can that go on your list? <laughs> okay, I'll put it on the list. There's a slow mo fight to that, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, we've got a couple of messages here. Uh, there we go. Oh, hi. Um, and actually, my brother, my brother over in the UK, it's uh, what time is it? Oh, it's midnight. He's okay. Uh, he actually works in the theater industry in the UK. Okay. And, uh, so he's he thinks we'll be fine. Excellent. Um, what what's next for you? What, okay, actually, first off, then. So obviously, Richie, we know that uh, that you know you were working you're working uh, on the plan for ships now going forward. Um, what's next for you? What, what's happening in the fall? For me, Richie, yeah, yeah, for you. Um, that's a great question. Actually, uh, I'm writing a play right now called Cobol Queen, which is about uh, a basketball tournament in New Waterford, uh, no, uh, Cape Breton, where I'm from, and it's a national basketball tournament. And I did a lot of interviews, so it's a documentary theater piece where I'm learning about everyone's sort of experience uh, with this tournament. Their their sort of high school romances, the beauty pageant that is involved with it, uh, all of these things that are pretty uh, entertaining. And so, yeah, I have a workshop coming up on that in the fall. Um, and that's kind of the, my second play about New Waterford because I did New Waterford Boy as well. Uh, yeah. So I'm trying to make a trilogy, I think. Awesome, awesome. Uh, I, you know what, you, you mentioned New Waterford Boy. I just, I, because I was so clever, I'm so proud of myself for digging out photos. I just wanted to bring it. I love that. Oh, oh wait, we can do the thing, we can do the thing. Somebody take a screen capture of that. <laughs> right, oh, there we go. 
Well done. Thank you. So uh, I'm suggesting that people ask you a question. Uh, I have one here. Uh, I don't know whether you know uh, Chris Smith, but besides YouTube and Instagram, are there any good Facebook groups where performers can share musical theater pieces, a virtual audience, so to speak? Any ideas, folks? Um musical theater per se like specifically but there is like a nova scotian kitchen party uh, oh, yeah. like web page i think right now that people are are posting to everyone's posting to it. it's like gigantic it's huge i see yeah. like a couple of three or four posts a day which actually could be an inspiration for a musical theater one mm. oh yeah 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 I've seen a lot of people, a lot of performers uh, posting themselves doing musical theater songs as well. Um, uh, in a few a few cases, I kind of like, oh, don't do that. But mostly, <laughs> mostly it's been it's been really good. Um, oh, um, Richie, I'm sorry about this. I, I, I hope this doesn't embarrass you. Ah! <laughs> yes, it is. Sandy Lee, let's yes, go it is. him. It Definitely is. And Laura Caswell wants to wish you a happy. Actually, Laura Caswell, wasn't it? Aren't we birthday twins? I think that it's her. Birthday. Her birthday's today. Anyway, happy today. birthday, Laura. Today. Oh, happy birthday, Laura. There's a lot of birthdays. A lot of April babies. A lot of April babies. Aries people tend to be in our industry as well. There might be a lot of COVID babies. Oh, yeah. Nine months' time. Right? Ew. <laughs> wow. Oh, the good news is, Richie, uh, Dolly Hollywood voted for you, obviously. Amazing. I wonder if I can tell you, but thank you, Dolly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, we're, we're nearly at the end of our time, uh, which is, you know, it's insane. I mean, we could just drink wine and stare at each other for a bit, but, you know. Uh, I have to, I have to, I have to uh, pin something out, though. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Sarah, tell me. Um, Tell me about a project that you've got coming up very soon that's going to happen on the interwebs. I know. Um, and it involves um, a certain giant creature. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, Wait, what? So oh, Sarah. Uh, nice. For Fringe this past year, uh, I was part of Kick at the Dark uh, Theater Collective's uh, production of Giant Killer Shark. Um, which uh, it's a musical spoof of that movie from the 70s that I'm sure you know all about, I, unless you live under a rock or unless you don't have a bigger boat, in <laughs> any case. Um, but uh, that will be um, airing for free uh, on April 15th. Uh, you can find the link on Facebook, or I don't know if Jeremy's been that industrious to find it, I'm unsure. Wow. Um, but there is, uh, you can find it Kick in the Dark or Kick at the Dark Theater Collective uh, or Giant Killer Shark. You can find it on Facebook. Uh, it's a free link um, and you just sign up for it. And it's good for 24 hours on April 15th. So from 7 30, April 15th till 7 30, April 16th. You can watch it on whatever device you want. We'll make and if you'd like to donate, it. you're welcome to. And that's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no. I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah, it's I... kind of nice. We actually lost like five shows because the hurricane happened. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I found kind of amazing. So the show yeah. uh, was canceled, uh, as many were, sadly, because of the hurricane that hit hit last um, fall, uh, early fall, uh, when, the, when everything was shut down uh, for a number yeah. of days. Uh, and it's taken a pandemic, a global <laughs> pandemic, to bring your show back. My concern is... What is this theater company planning next? And will it have an effect on the rest of us? Yeah, I know, right? Look, look no. around, Lara. Look what, around. No, what don't we know? Yeah. Kick at the Dark is possibly attuned to the universal mm -hmm. shenanigans. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> I also just want to uh, say, you know, we, we, we've been doing this to raise awareness. Uh, uh, of Neptune and and the situation that Neptune finds itself in right now, uh, needing support. But the reason I really wanted to get the three of you on here was to highlight the fact that this community, this uh, Nova Scotian community, the whole world, has multiple thousands of arts organizations that need our support right now. Kick at the dark, Heist, Ships Company, um, venues like the Bus Stop, 
Oh wait, that's not the bus stop. That's the train. <laughs> I hit the wrong button. There we go. <laughs> I, was, I was nearly so cool there. Did you see that? Yeah. Wait, hold on. Uh, um, hold on. See, the bus stop. My other apartment. <laughs> yeah. Um, and of course, uh, our beloved Fringe Festival. Um, we want to make sure that uh, uh, you know we're fully aware in the arts that there it's not quite the time yet to uh, to be full on campaigning for financial support. There are people that need our help. Uh, we need to keep off the streets, and people's focus needs to be um, on getting this pandemic dealt with. But um, when you are ready. Uh, these three are just uh, a small sampling of the arts organizations in our community uh, that would welcome our love, even if it's just buying a ticket, even if it's just buying a subscription um, or buying a gift card or, you know, sending them 25 bucks. Um, let's, let's see if we can make that happen. Uh, I've got a few more comments coming in before we wrap up. Let's see if any of them... <laughs> well, here's an interesting... Okay. Uh, oh, wait. Andrew Chandler has got some information for us. Uh, for, oh, the, okay. for the person oh. that was asking about uh, musical theater, there's a group called the Isolation Musical Theater Challenge. So there we go. Hmm. There's an isolation challenge for everything right now. I challenge people to make me a cake and deliver it to my house. What's uh, your address? It's I was like, oh, do you deliver? Uh, you <laughs> want to yeah, no, that's what I've been doing. I've been making cakes and cookies and leaving them at people's doorsteps. I've been doing that with my neighbors too, because I'm trying to save myself from myself. <laughs> I, I totally right? did that. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. So my neighbors keep getting cookies and muffins and cakes. No, the concerning thing for me is that one of the other members of Kick of the Dark has answered my question about what the next uh, pestilence is that we're going to have thrown upon us. So thank you, Andrew Chandler. Uh, good to know. And a, a question, uh, which I, uh, well, wait, that's not it. Oh, th thank you for the answer, that was that one. Uh, and a question here, will Neptune ever do the musical Grease? Well, actually, Neptune has done the musical Grease. Uh, I think the last time was about, ooh, I'm gonna say 20 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even so, okay, that. so I think Patricia Zantilli was in that uh, production because mm -hmm. uh, for some reason, we went shopping at Belly Village and uh, Aaron, found a costume that that has Patricia Zantilli and Grease on the tag from it. And I think Did you buy it? when we bought it, yes. Did yes. you buy it really? Yeah, Aaron is actually maybe able to get it right now, but it's like this That's I, amazing. I don't know what scene it's from. It's like this <laughs> looks like Judy Jetson. Like I don't understand it. Here, oh, look. Oh I I I'll, I'll, the, uh, I'll not recognize it. Let's see. Oh awesome. my god. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That might be from the Teen Angel scene. Yeah. yeah. Patricia Zantilli, Marty, Grease. It's on the tag. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember. I remember that production because I auditioned for it and I didn't get a part because why would you cast an Englishman in that show who can't dance? But anyway, um, yeah. She, she was in that. Now, if you were to uh, now put that. Is, does eBay still exist? I don't even know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, could, we could sell it? Yeah, because she's got a fan base out there, Richie. You could make a fortune. <laughs> I actually just directed um, Noises Off in Edmonton at the Mayfield, and Patricia was in that, and uh, she's doing well. And uh, Well, I, I would like to buy her costume off you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Uh, Folks, uh, thank you so much for being here tonight. It's been lovely to chat with you and lovely to see you, see your faces and see that you're doing well. I'm sure that the folks that watch this uh, either tonight or over the next few days will be happy to see uh, see you all together. Um, any final thoughts before we uh, sign off? Anything you want to say to the masses out there? Send me your address and I'll make you cake. Okay, I'm gonna put you in close up. Say that again so that the whole world knows that when I send you my address after this broadcast, you said it. Send me your address and I will make you cake. I think I am currently <laughs> the happiest person on the internet. And that's a lot of happy, there's a lot of happy people on the internet. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's great, Lara. I, I'm gonna do that. And, and if you don't, Sorry. even if you slice. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, okay, cool. But I don't, I don't want you to leave isolation. I want you to be safe. So, you, you, you know, you let me know. We're, we're looking at. Um, anything from the other two? Uh, what I'm learning is that it's fine to take some of the pressure off because we're all in this together and that if you need a day uh, to just really not do anything, uh, you're, it's valid. Uh, yeah. And that uh, we got to take care of ourselves. And so I hope that you're all... Uh, yeah, even though it's stressful, I hope that you're taking care of yourself. Awesome. Yeah, you. just that's my thing too is practice instant forgiveness and be kind to yourself. You just, yeah. it's a hard time. It's strange. It's weird. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, doing constructive things right now. You got to do what you need to do to get by. So be kind to yourself. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you all. I'm going to, uh, <laughs> ceremonially uh, kick you back into the green room. Thanks for being here. Stay Thank safe you. and look after Thanks yourself. For Thanks for having me. Thank you. One at a time they disappear back into the green room where there's a whole buffet of cake. Um, thank you, folks, for watching again this week. We hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, please spread the word if you do get a chance to uh, uh, about the fact that we're doing this. And if you are enjoying it, um, would be happy. Thanks again to my guests tonight, Sarah Richardson, Richie Wilcox, and Lara Lewis. Um, we are about to announce the guests for next week's shows. They start on Tuesday to Friday. Um, Oh, I want—I so want to tell you, but I'm not allowed to tell you. We have to do it as, a, as an announcement. So um, be safe, look after yourself, and uh, if you can, um, always consider supporting the arts organizations around you uh, during this difficult time, when you're ready and when you're able. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>